electric vehicles aren't the future period at least the way things are right now electric vehicles cannot be the future but wait let me break down this video into multiple parts to give you a holistic view of where lies the problem firstly why is there a need to go electric well there are two primary reasons for the same number one depleting fossil fuel which will get over one day some day not really soon but eventually number 2 the environment crisis to save the world we need to drive boring cars or at least that's what the governments think now i said cars because i still feel scooters can go electric commercial vehicles can go electric but cars and motorcycles simply should not be electric So first let's get motorcycles out of the way. In developing country people use a motorcycle to get from point A to point B basically for commuting. Meanwhile in developed countries people buy a motorcycle to have fun. Why would anyone pay to ride a microwave because an electric motorcycle is a soulless piece of shit. Anyways what's the current scenario like? And honestly it's very worrisome for car enthusiasts like me and you. Mercedes says it will go all electric by 2030. Volkswagen Group says that it will go all electric by 2026. Jaguar says that it will become an all electric car brand by 2025. Above means that no new ICE car will be launched and the current models will die a slow death. By 2040 a good number of countries and car makers will not have a single ICE powered car in their lineup. with car makers only making EVs Tata Motors has actually pledged to this and a lot of countries are actually planning to ban all ice powered cars completely In fact the EU has just announced that by 2035 Cars with combustion engines will be completely banned. The UK plans to do that by 2030. But you know what we all love? BMW. It's a car company which is very sensible. It doesn't follow the herd and the BMW CEO has not yet committed to going all electric. In fact, he says that going all electric is stupid, doesn't make much sense because we should let the customers decide whether they want a combustion engine or an EV. not the regulators but why the need for evs like i said to fight the climate change and reduce the environmental impact of cars oh, come on! but are evs really emissions free you really believe that well here lies the problem there is no such thing as a zero emissions vehicle i knew it because the process of making an electric car is hugely damaging to the environment The battery that electric cars use need a lot of mining to be done for the raw materials like zinc, cobalt and lithium and that process is extremely harmful to the environment resulting in a major source of greenhouse gases. To make a 450 kg battery you have to dig up 200000 kg of material, 100 to 300 barrels of oil which will then manufacture a battery which can hold one barrel of oil equivalent of energy. Just manufacturing one battery results in 10 to 40 tons of CO2 emissions. The bigger the battery, the higher the emissions. In contrast, to manufacture an ICE car you only emit 35% of that. Right now there are very few electric cars, but as demand and volumes increase, the amount of raw materials needed to make batteries for these electric cars will be more harmful to the environment than any ice powered car can ever be batteries need metals like lithium and nickel which are available in very small quantities they are also very rare to process them results in a lot of toxic waste from the rock which battery makers really struggle to deal with for instance 50% of the world's lithium actually comes from the lithium triangle in south america and you know what an electric vehicle's battery only uses 6% lithium now obviously a lot of mining has been taking place in this particular lithium triangle in south america resulting in the battery makers consuming 65% of the available water there which has adversely affected the agriculture there this obviously results in dirty mining which is more harmful to the environment however there isn't enough mining available to make batteries for electric cars for everyone in the world right now then there's another issue and that is with cobalt to mine cobalt battery makers are actually using child labor in fact as per a study by iit in india electric vehicles are more polluting than petrol and diesel models largely because the source of energy is not clean a lot of the energy used to charge these electric vehicles is coming from coal powered plants it will definitely take us quite some time to get electricity only from clean sources like wind solar or hydroelectric sources not to forget the kind of deforestation that is needed for raw materials to make more battery 
batteries for more EVs. So the source of energy is very crucial. When clean energy is not used, something like a Hummer EV is much more polluting than a D-segment sedan which is powered by petrol or a diesel engine. And that is just in charging. Mining is an entirely different story which I've obviously detailed earlier in this video. So what have we established till now? EVs are not clean when it comes to manufacturing and ice-powered cars are cleaner. However, EVs have zero tailpipe emissions. Thank you, pardon. Actually, EVs do not have a tailpipe, so what will they emit? But ice-powered cars actually emit and that is the real problem which everyone is seeing at the moment. <laughs> Because when you make an ice powered car, it is fueled by petrol and diesel. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. Now the other issue is, oil extraction is also not clean. There's a ton of CO2 which is emitted when you extract oil. So EVs do turn out to be more environment friendly over a longer duration, but replacing all the older ice powered cars will be a huge challenge and also very costly. But the biggest problem is that there is simply not enough mining available to make batteries for everyone to drive electric cars. So why are countries so hell bent on going all electric? Good question. And there are a lot of reasons for this. Let's take Europe for example. It's a continent which has largely believed in exporting all its emissions to third world countries. So dirty mining, not Europe's problem, that's something which Africa and South America have to deal with. Right now, Europe is kind of screwed because Europe actually relies on Russia for oil as well as energy. And Putin has actually no work but to fight with Ukraine. Because of which, Europe actually put a sanction on Russia and Russia returned the favor by cutting energy as well as gas to Europe. Retaliation. Tit for tit. This meant Europe had no other option but to go to Middle Eastern countries for fuel and they supplied them happily at a very high cost. That's the reason why fuel cost has actually doubled in Europe today. So now if Europe actually goes electric, it doesn't have to rely on Russia or any other country for oil. Smart move. Yeah! But everyone still has to rely on China, which is kind of baffling because they're putting themselves in the same position they were in earlier, which is relying on a country for an important resource. Because Chinese companies actually dominate when it comes to batteries and battery materials. And that brings me to India. Our biggest enemy is China. Okay, Pakistan also, but Pakistan has no power or common sense, so we'll just leave them aside for a moment. Now the thing is, when we go all electric, we're relying more on China because China has the battery tech, they have the battery manufacturing expertise. So basically by going all electric, we are actually getting more reliant on China. Why would we want to do that? I know you're desperate, but have some self-respect. But then there are other reasons why regulators are going for the EV push. The current market of petrol, diesel, CNG, LPG, all is very saturated. Today, you can't make a big buck by investing in an oil company or in an established car maker. But the chance of you making a lot of money in a new industry like EVs is very high. Nobody became rich by buying General Motors or Ford shares in the 2010s. We have been betrayed. But people who bought Tesla shares have done really well for themselves in the same time period. This basically has two implications. There's a high probability that people in the government have investment in EV startups and the banning of ICE cars has a direct personal benefit to them. Because if they really cared about the environment, rather than mandating EVs, why wouldn't the Indian government look at banning 30-year-old trucks and buses which actually spew out large amounts of black smoke from their exhaust. So you can drive a 30 year old bus which is BS-2 compliant but no, you cannot drive an 11 year old BS-3 compliant diesel car in Delhi. Hypocrisy, Hypocrisy at its, at its very, very, peak. very peak. And the funny thing is that many of these buses and trucks belong to the government or probably to a politician who owns a transport company so banning these vehicles makes no financial sense to them. Let's be honest, no one is pushing for EVs out of their love for their environment. Fake, 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 fake. Do you think Ola can make a half as decent scooter which can compete with the Honda Activa? Not in the next 1000 years. <laughs> at least not a petrol powered one. So they went ahead and made an electric scooter, which although had a lot of issues, still secured good amount of investment for the company. Great plan, Echo. And of course, there's nothing wrong with it. We live in a capitalist world where 99.99% people are actually chasing money. Who said money doesn't buy happiness? Do you even know how many EV two-wheeler brands exist in India? Easily a hundred plus. Do you think that any one of these companies could actually make a petrol scooter on their own? Absolutely not. Because making an engine isn't as simple as outsourcing battery and motor tech from China. And that's what most of these companies are doing. They're going to China, they're picking up scooters, rebadging them and selling it in the Indian market. In fact, some of these scooters are exactly the same with different names and color schemes. Basically, EVs give an opportunity to a lot of people to make a lot of money and that's where the EV push is coming from. Now let's assume that you do not care about the environment. All you care about is cheaper running costs because let's admit it, is in our blood. 
India is simply not ready for electric vehicles. Period. Damn, now we talking? The government might say whatever they feel like, but at the end of the day, they do not put their money where their mouth is. What has our government done to improve the charging infrastructure in India? Nothing. Nil. Nada. Zero. Shunya. And that brings me to the biggest problem with EVs. Charging. We already have a lot of things to charge on a daily basis, right? From our phones to earphones to laptops to watches and whatnot. Do you want to charge another thing? We're sick and tired of it. Which by the way, cannot be done at home, neither with a power bank. The charging infrastructure in India is shit. Language. Actually, it's garbage and rubbish. I went out to see how easy or difficult it is to charge an electric car in India by taking a very popular route, Mumbai to Pune. The car I was driving had a fantastic range, the Mercedes EQS 53 AMG. There were two chargers midway on the expressway at the food mall. One wasn't working and the other one did not work. However, it ended up wasting 20 minutes of my time trying to plug it in. Because in order to charge an EV in India, you have to go through a very cumbersome process. Firstly, you reach the charging station, download their app, which will obviously take some time. Once you download the app, you put your personal details. Why do you have to put your personal details? So obviously they can call you and spam you. Then you have to put the vehicle details. The car I was driving was obviously the EQS, which was not there in the drop down menu. So the pump attendant actually told me, put Audi e-tron please. I did that. Then they tell me to actually add money to the wallet, which means that I'm blocking money in their wallet, which is not refundable. Which means that if I don't use that money, I cannot bring it back to my account. And why are they taking the vehicle details? So they can do customer profiling as well. So they can call you and spam you with a lot of promotional offers. So now we are finally ready to charge after 20 minutes of this bullshit. And in the same time, I'd actually gone and charged an electric car in the UK because in the UK, it's very simple as just stopping, plugging and tapping your car and bang, your car charges. They don't want your personal details. They don't care what vehicle it is because they know at the end of the day, I cannot plug that charger in my ass, right? I will plug it in a car only. And trust me that 20 minutes was enough for me to charge the Hyundai Ioniq 5 from 30 to 80% because obviously charging there is much, much, much faster. The problem is that charging speeds in India are just shit, very, very slow. And obviously the chargers are also shit and there aren't many chargers either. Meanwhile, in developed countries, the usual charging speed is 120 kilowatt with DC fast charging, of course. In India, DC fast charging usually means 25 kilowatt and if you're lucky, you will get 50 kilowatt. But mostly where there's a charger, there are ice powered cars parked right there because parking is also an issue here. Yeah. So I couldn't charge at the first charging station, no problem. I went to the next charging station, which happens to be right after the Pune toll on the expressway at the food mall where there's McDonald's. And there were actually ice powered cars standing right in front of the charger. So after some time, when I told them to move away, they were looking baffled, like, what's going And then finally, when I put the car there, I realized that the charger does not work. So I asked the pump attendant, what's the scene? Why is the charger not working? He told me that this charger was installed two and a half years back, but hasn't been inaugurated yet. This is the freaking seriousness of EVs in India. Well done. All the government does is offer subsidies, which is actually enjoyed by the super rich. I mean, why would a Mercedes, BMW, Audi or a Jaguar buyer who's spending more than a crore need subsidy with his registration and road tax waived off? It's a clear case of taking from the poor and giving it to the rich. Because an EQS 580 buyer doesn't have to pay rupees 25 lakhs for registration and road tax, which an S-Class buyer has to. Both these cars have a very similar X showroom price. In fact, I think 1.55 crores is the X showroom price of the EQS 580, which turns out to be rupees 1.63 crores on road because of the cost of insurance. Meanwhile, the S class has an X showroom price of 1.6 crores for the S350D, which turns out to be almost rupees 1.9 crores on road. That's like 27 lakhs extra just for registration. And this benefit is given so that people go and buy EVs because nobody wants to buy EVs on merit. Then you also get free parking and then you don't have to pay congestion charge and a lot of other benefits just to get an electric car purely because nobody wants to buy these cars on merit. Trust me. And I'll anyways choose the S-Class. Why would I want to spend on an electric car? But anyways, there's a reason for subsidies, not just in India, but globally too. Simply because everybody knows that the world is not ready for EVs. So to push them, financial benefits are being doled out. Battery tech is evolving. You buy an EV today and the very same EV is available next year at a similar price, but with a better battery and a higher range. Goodbye, Goodbye resale value. value. Okay, forget public charging and let's focus on home charging because that seems to be the solution, right? Wrong. Wrong. Because I stay in Navi Mumbai and since the past six months, I'm trying to get an EV meter to charge an electric car. But MSEB, which stands for Maharashtra State Electricity Board, is not supplying me with an EV meter. Instead, they tell me that you accommodate your EV meter in your existing house meter 
meter to charge your electric car. Are now here lies the problem. You know the structure of payment for electricity is very tiered. So depending on your usage, this will actually result in my per unit cost going up by 50%. So in order to charge my EV at home, I will have to start paying more for using my microwave as well as refrigerator. You see, electricity billing has cost brackets as per units consumed. So with me having my EV charger plugged into my home meter, I automatically end up in a higher bracket, thereby increasing my electricity cost dramatically. So much for EVs are cheap to run, huh? It's business. Then there are other problems like battery performance depleting with time. When I got this phone, it had 100% battery performance. After a lot of usage, now it stands at 94%. I'm gonna get an iPhone, everybody's gonna be jealous. And battery performance will obviously keep depleting with time. Yeah, man. In a year's time, I will actually have to replace this phone because it will not hold enough charge for me to use this phone throughout the day without having to plug it in multiple times. Now the very same thing applies to an EV battery as well. With time, its performance will reduce and so will the range, resulting in a lot more range anxiety. Replacement cost of a battery isn't cheap. I actually prefer to replace my phone than to replace its battery. ABC or always be cost cutting. The cost of replacing the battery of a very popular EV, the Tata Nexon EV, is rupees 7 lakhs and people have seen the battery reach unacceptable levels in just 2 years or 70,000 kilometers. Imagine the resale of EVs because now the battery performance or the amount of battery health decides the resale value of your car. That's not good news. And with the cost of batteries being this high, it's actually cheaper to burn your EV than to replace its battery. That's the reason why someone in Russia had actually burned the Tesla Model S because the battery went kaput. <laughs> People will actually choose to abandon their cars than to replace the batteries because the cost of replacing the batteries is so high. I can't afford it. In fact, at one point, we will also have to deal with a lot of abandoned cars and how to scrap them. Well, that's another problem. Which brings me to another problem of EVs catching fire and it happens a lot of times and a lot of people actually get injured because of this. Why does it happen so frequently in India? Simply because any Tom, Dick and Harry can sell any electric vehicle without any compliance. This issue can be resolved very easily with stricter testing of course but uh, that's something India has mandated from December of testing batteries before they can be put in any vehicle. Wait what? Right now you can still sell an electric vehicle with battery without having any test or compliance? They'd like to kill people so easily? Well, that's capitalism for you. But if you think India is the only place where batteries catch fire, no, 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 you're very wrong. It happens all across the globe. Especially when flooding happens, even Teslas catch fire. And the fire is very difficult to doze off. It actually takes 8 times the time and 10 times the water to doze off an electric car fire. Which in terms of numbers is around 6 to 8 hours or 35 to 45 thousand liters of water. You're kidding me! So why does this exactly happen? Well, it's very simple. If an electric car gets submerged in a flood, there's a big problem because there is seawater and seawater obviously contains salt and salt is deadly for an electric car's battery. Because salt will cause the cells to combust due to short circuiting and when one pack of cells combust, then the other packs around will also start doing the same. Basically, these batteries do not need any oxygen to combust. And this is actually known as thermal runaway. We all know that India has one of the highest flooding in the whole world and one of the worst fire rescue operations. And I'm not blaming the firemen for this, but our infrastructure is such that getting to a fire and dozing that off quickly doesn't really happen. Now you would be like, okay, fine, battery is bad, it catches fire, it depletes, no problem. But don't car makers give you 8 years or 1.6 lakh kilometer warranty on your battery? Of course they do. And now you're like, oh, battery got fire, that I can cover under insurance. I'm not too sure if insurance covers all this. However, car makers will replace your batteries if there is a problem within 8 years or 1.6 lakh kilometers. But then a lot of batteries will be replaced. So where will the old batteries actually go? The thing is, disposing of old batteries is another huge problem because it is an environmental hazard. Plus, how will you store them? They can easily combust there as well. Oh, wait. If someone actually buys a used EV, will he get the warranty? Probably not which means more battery replacement costs and more money for car makers mm, no wonder everyone is pushing for EVs now this obviously brings me to the lamest thing you can imagine ever in a car which is subscription services now what is that with EVs not requiring as much service as ice cars of course because there's no engine oil replacement that is needed car makers are turning to services not the vehicle service but subscription services to make more money out of you. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. 
so your car might be much more capable than what you experience you can pay a small amount every month to unlock the full potential of your car that makes no sense right just imagine you're going for a drag race and you have actually subscribed to the launch control package and then that is the time it expires and you lose in a drag race it's like stupid now my biggest problem with EVs is the range and the range anxiety which comes with it. I'm already very anxious about charging my phone and various other gadgets in my life and because I'm a content creator, I have like cameras and drones and whatnot. But anyways, the problem is that the government is only fooling us. Now you tell me something, when I was driving the EQS 580, I turned it on, 100% charge, it's telling me it will go 590 kilometers on a full charge. But Mercedes Benz will tell you that it will go 857 kilometers on a full charge. Did I say that? Mercedes did not claim that. That is something which ARA has tested so how is ARAI giving us such bogus numbers it's very simple the testing is actually happening on a treadmill which is known as a dynometer the car is running in a closed air conditioned room with no road resistance no wind resistance and that ideal condition is just not possible in the real world you can never get 857 kilometers out of a Mercedes EQS 580 but yet the government tries to fool people by giving these obnoxious claim numbers and that's something they have been doing for a few efficiency numbers as well for petrol diesel cars too and that's the reason i remember with the nexon ev a lot of people were frustrated with the range they said we never got the claim range how can you get the claim range unless and until you put the car in your house on a treadmill and then drive it basically the government takes no consideration of real world conditions so if you think car makers are fooling you no it is the government which is fooling you so i can't blame tata motors saying that oh look they claimed so much with their nexon ev the government is certifying saying this will go that many kilometers so let's forget about these ideal conditions they do not exist in the actual world, when you're driving an EV, it depletes battery much faster when you're driving spiritedly. In fact, above 100 km per hour speed, an EV depletes range 2x faster. Meanwhile, an ice-powered car is much more efficient when you're going on a longer drive. And that's something I noticed on my journey because I took the EQS 580 to Pune, but I had to come back in a C-Class and even with a hard right leg, which is a hard right foot actually, and driving the car more aggressively, I still had more than half tank of petrol fuel in the car thanks to hybrid tech. So I think hybrid is certainly much more sensible right now for the Indian market. Electric just doesn't cut it. And in case I ran out of fuel, I could like refuel in a matter of a few minutes, but with an electric car, it takes quite some time as well. So there's no practicality because there's range anxiety and then real world range is not what you expect. And depending on your driving style, range can deplete very fast as well. And that's not the case with ice powered cars and not to forget evs are sh to drive they are heavy devoid of feel they don't have any sound that's why they put these fake sounds which try to excite you but feel at it miserably meanwhile an ice powered car has the soul you feel something when you drive an ice car in fact i am not kidding a 10 year old volkswagen polo is more fun to drive than a 10 times more expensive electric car You know what, there's actually a modern research on music, sound and smell as well, which says that all these things actually contain emotion which a human being feels. And that's the reason it's also used as a therapy tool. At times when I'm upset, I go for a drive in an ice car, I feel so much better. When I go on a drive in an EV, I feel more depressed somehow. Because sound has a huge cultural benefit. It also is imperative for the human experience. I know this is a very modern thinking on a biological level, but with EVs having no sound, okay, they have these fake sound, but still EVs, EVs lag, lag the, soul, the soul and cars are going to become commodities in the future. And you know why these EVs drive like a boat? Because the battery is placed between the front and rear wheels in the wheelbase and lowered for better center of gravity, the ground clearance suffers because of that. Some electric cars have huge issues clearing those illegal speed breakers which we have in India in plenty. Those big, fat, ugly, out of shape speed breakers actually end up scraping the underbelly of the car, usually the battery pack. Which brings me to some reasons why you should actually go ahead and buy an EV. You are selfish and think only about yourself because it is cheap for you but not really for the environment. You have a lot of free time and you love to waste time by spending time on charging. You are penny wise and pound foolish. So you will save in running costs but you will spend a lot more in battery replacement. You like to be the guinea pig. EVs aren't tried and tested like ice cars but you would like to sacrifice yourself should your EV catch fire. You hate driving and want to sit on something which has the same feel as a microwave to get to work. You like getting stranded in the middle of the road when range drops abruptly and you can't find a charger. You like to complicate your life by having another thing to worry about, charging your car. You like to drive a boat because EVs are heavy and have a feel of a boat. You don't like to drive in a straight line because with EVs, which have a low ground clearance, you will have to angle yourself over speed breakers. 
But jokes aside, and I'm not even joking, EVs do have some real benefits, such as vehicle to load or V2L, which lets you actually charge electric appliances from your car, a feature which is available in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6, and a lot more cars will have it in the future. Something you don't need, you don't want, but good for bragging rights. Less traffic. Since charging takes a lot more time when compared to refueling, a lot of cars will actually be at the charging station rather than on the road. Less people will honk, you know. Why duplicate the battery? Free sauna, yes, that's right. Because when the battery is having less charge and you can't find a charger, you'll turn off the air conditioning and get a free sauna in your car. I've experienced this multiple times in electric cars. I'm not kidding, it's amazing. Less road rage, that's right. With electric cars, road rage will definitely decrease because less people will overtake you. Most people are like, let me just conserve the range. I don't know when I'll find the next charger. Or will it be free as well? As things stand currently, neither is electric car production helpful to the environment nor is charging in most cases that is. But many of you would be like, yeah, we faced similar issues when ICE cars had started. So, you know, we should give EVs some time. I agree. There's a possibility we can get on top of dirty mining. We can get on top of dirty charging as well. But we should not mandate electric cars unless and until we reach that stage. The sweeping statements of banning ICE powered cars is just very stupid and immature. So to sum it up, EVs aren't green. Charging is complex. Range anxiety is a big problem. Chargers in India are substandard. There isn't enough mining to go all electric. And the current charging grid simply cannot handle enough electric cars at one given point of time. Plug a lot of electric cars in one charging grid and the charging grid will simply give up. Now this isn't a problem in developed countries but this sure will be a problem in developing countries like ours. However, with greener sources of electricity, cleaner mining, EVs will surely become more environmentally efficient when compared to ice powered cars. But do we have enough resources to go all electric? Electric. With the current technology, I'm afraid no. no. As things stand currently, hybrid is the best option to address climate change. Want to go Want all to electric? electric? Let that happen on merit rather than enforcing people to buy electric cars. May the force be with us all. So guys, this was a quick deep dive. I know it's not quick, it's quite a long video. A deep dive into electric. Yes, electric can be the future, but not anytime soon and not in developing countries like ours where electricity is not clean at all. And plus we need to give this time. We need not enforce things on people. Let the market decide what it wants and there are going to be other better, greener ways to save the environment like CNG, hybrid, and probably even hydrogen for that matter. I just hope we get to drive ice cars for a longer duration of time because nothing can replace the sound of a V8 engine. Thank you. Thoda jada lamba ho gaya.